All right, what's going on, World 2 family? We're back with another video, and today we're focusing on more of a beginner's guide to how to run beads on pipe, also on how to cap pipe in 5G fixed position. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you through that, so let's get into it. Right, guys so like I said I have a pipe tacked here in the 5g position and this pipe as you can see is actually a blank pipe it has no weld on it so whenever you're running beads on it you can tend to get lost you know kind of swirling around the pipe so I'm what I used is actually called a wraparound if you guys have never seen one this is called a wraparound what you're gonna do is basically self-explanatory is just wrap it around the pipe here that'll give you a straight line and what I would do is I would use a soapstone and I would mark my line all the way around the pipe, just like that. So once I have a straight line, I just get the grinder and I make me a nice deep line right here. You can see that's how I'll start my first bead on a blank pipe. With what I said in capping the pipe, you're gonna be using 7018. And here we have a 332nd 7018, which is most common out in the field. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag my bead on the cap or just a regular bead. That's what I like to do, my method of welding. I don't really like to do circles or weave it. To me, the pattern comes out nice when I just drag it, do a nice, simple drag all the way through the pipe. So with my first line here, I'm gonna throw my first bead. And then after that, I'm gonna show you guys how to draw another line. And that's what I do basically all the way through the pipe or all the way through my cap and that's how i get nice straight beads every time on my cap all right guys so for like i said the beginners i know you might be uncomfortable when you're welding pipe so i'm going to show you how to position yourself using this c-clamp so what i like to do when i'm welding 5g on a pipe a coupon i tack it i mean i, I clamp it here at six o'clock all right that gives me a nice prop as if there was a long pipe here and what I do is I use the inner part of my elbow here just like this to hold myself up so what this clamp allows me to do is hold my body weight as I'm welding it lets me get up nice and close and personal so another thing that I like to do when I'm on the bottom of a pipe either it be a coupon or I'm out in the field I like to bend this rod and if you look at it there's three dots here where I bend it is just after the last one here just like that you see? So whenever I get my stinger, I clamp my stinger right here. Point this down and I'm able to use a short rod because when I use a longer rod, for instance, the rod shakes like this, just like this. So when me bending the rod, it allows me to have a stiffer, nice, more stable arc. And that's what I do whether I'm in the field or I'm welding a coupon, practicing, whatever it may be, but I think this would really help you guys out. So I, something that I would recommend. All right, guys, so before we start, I wanna just give a quick shout out to Outlaw Leather for this nice uh, carbon fiber pancake. Uh, I use it every time I weld sticks, so it's only right. So let's get it back into this. Like I said, I'm gonna use the inner part of my elbow just like this to hold my weight. Also, what I forgot to mention is to prop your right leg up or if you're left-handed, it would be vice versa because this allows me to to hold my weight here and gives me like i said the better stability that i need so let's go ahead and start it i'm burning at 85 amps and that's where i like to use my 7018 no hotter nothing less 85 amps so here we go like i said i'm just doing a straight drag following that guideline that I'm telling you guys, when you draw that guideline, it helps you see everything, keeps you nice and straight. If you've never done it, I really, really recommend that. So just a simple drag. Just go to wherever the rod stops. You don't don't worry about going high, don't worry about going far. Just stop where it stops. So for me that should be right about here. There we go. All right guys, so like I said, I use my clamp here at six o'clock to get me off the bottom, but now I'm gonna put my clamp here at three o'clock or whatever, whichever way you're looking at, nine o'clock, three o'clock. 
that's where I put it so that I can prop myself here, use it to come up. But this time I'm gonna use a whole rod because I feel a lot more comfortable than I would on the bottom. Like I said, 85 amps, whole rod, clamp at three o'clock, I tie in, let's go. Like I said, guys, just follow that line. You can see it nice and clear. Just take your time, go slow. Don't rush it. Remember, when you're running beads, you want to build that stamina. You want to keep going. Don't stop, especially when you're on your cap. You don't want to have a lot of tie-in. So just try your best not to stop. Like I said, build that stamina up. I'm going to stop right here. All right, guys. So now we're up here on the top. And for, like I said, for the beginners out there, if you're in school or wherever you may be, here I have a 45, so I'm able to prop on that. And if you guys are out in the field, obviously you'd have a longer pipe. So that's that just takes care of itself. But from here, it's just self-explanatory. Just go ahead and finish this off. Simple drag. But when I'm on top, I go a little bit slower. That way it'll build up nice. So here we go. Just go a little bit slower, let it build up. On the top, it tends to lay a little bit flatter. Stop at 12 o'clock, try not to weld downhill. All right guys, so on this side, it's the same thing. I'm gonna just weld this out real quick because I wanna show you guys how you should be terminating the welds up on top. So like I said, remember six o'clock on the bottom, short rod, then work your way up. Here we go. Nice tie in. guys so we did this side just the same way we did this side the only exception is that we have the clamp here to substitute for this but what I wanted to show you guys is how you should be terminating your beads or your cap so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in just like normal but when I get to the other weld what I'm gonna do is kind of circle it let it build and then pop out that makes like a button that actually brings the weld up so that whenever you finish your whole weld and you go to grind it, it's not under flush. It's actually over so that way you can actually grind them down and make them even with the rest of the beads. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like right now. So like I said, just a regular tie-in. Remember on top, take your time, go slow. But when you get to the other bead, you're going to pass it just like this. I'm going to pass it, then I'm going to go around it, then I'll pop off. Like I said, what that does, it gives me a button just like this. You want to look at that? That's a nice button right there. 
So like I said, whenever I have all my beads and I finish my cap or anything that I have just practicing, uh, when I grind that down, it'll be nice and even with the rest of my beads. Like I said, it won't be under flush. Maybe some of you guys have that problem whenever you finish your beads and you go to grind the stop, it's under flush. That can actually get you in trouble with the QC. So this right here is something that I always do to keep me from having that problem. So. All right guys, so like I said earlier, I use the grinder to make guidelines to keep my beads straight, all right? So now that we have our first one in place, we don't need that wraparound anymore. What I, instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this, this uh, grinding stone up against that bead to give me a nice line, just like the one I previously did. Nice, pretty deep line. So this is what it looks like right here. All right guys, so it looks a little something like that. You see? Not too deep, but it gives me a solid guideline, like I said, keeps me straight. Also, the point of that is to take out any trash that I may have in there. So if you look right here, I have a small indentation. And with that being exposed with that grind line, I'll be able to burn that out on the next one. So there's multiple uses for that. All right, guys, so you just saw me do the second guideline up against that bead. Remember, six o'clock with the clamp, inner arm, short rod, and let's weld it. Follow that line. Take your time. This might make a world of difference for some of you guys. I'm telling you. I know when I show some of my students, their cap improves 10 times. Let's give it a try. All right, so remember, now clamp, three o'clock, nine o'clock, whichever one you want to call it. Oop. Go ahead and weld it. Just watch that bead, that left side of that puddle, flow over the edge of that line on the left side. Watch it fuse into that bead. Now remember, don't rush it. Just let the rod melt. Do its thing. Let it take you where it wants. But be watching that left side of that puddle. Watch it tie in, fuse into that other bead. Remember guys, try to build that stamina. Don't stop, just keep going. All right guys, so before I finish this top here, I wanted to show you how you're supposed to stop this next bead, all right? Don't stop it at the same tie-in. You want to stop it before. So that way when you finish your cap or all your beads, the, all the tie-ins are staggered at an angle. So when I bring this up, I'm going to stop it before that last tie-in. That way when I tie it back here, it's, it's already starting to stagger. Let's go ahead and do that. Like I said, watch that left side. That's where you're gonna see that tie-in. I'm bringing it up. I'm gonna stop right here.
right, guys. So like I said, whenever you're tying in to terminate the weld, you want to stagger them. So that's what I did. Remember, I stopped behind my last tie-in. So when I come from here, I'm going to keep going a little bit further and make the button again. And that's how I terminate the weld. So it looks like this. Remember, pass that tie in. Go over your last weld, circle it, pop off. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this pipe. So before I do, I'm gonna do another, which will be my last grind line. But if you guys are on pipe, practicing at your school, I mean, by all means, keep going fill it the whole pipe but if you guys are wanting to practice your cap this is usually where i would stop i usually get about a three or four beat cap so i'm gonna just go ahead and finish this one at three do my last line and i hope this video helped you guys so. So that was the beginner's guide to beads on pipe, as well as uh, some help for your cap in the 5G position. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed that video and I really hope that it helped you. And a lot of the things that I said, you go ahead and try them because I really, I'm really confident that these things will help you out. So that's it, Well2 family. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tune in to our videos and we'll see you on the next one.